In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I welcome you to the Pentecost Sunday. This is a very important day, a very important feast for the church, for all of us. On this day, our Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled the promise of sending the power from on high upon the apostles and the other disciples who were gathered there at the upper room. He fulfilled his promise. The Lord will never promise and fail. So today we are happy to reflect on the power and the personality and the importance of the Holy Spirit. Some time ago, I came across a riddle that featured a man who was asked to make a choice between the wife and the mom, both drowning in a river and he had opportunity to save only one of them. It was tough for the man to make a decision. In fact, he could not make anyone because he regarded the two as very important to him. In life, we have people who are important to us or some who are more important to us that we give them time, we give them attention and because we revere what they possess in connection to us. So today we want to understand how important the personality of the Holy Spirit is in our lives. Is the Holy Spirit important? Is the Holy Spirit indispensable? Can we do without the Holy Spirit? More directly, we want to understand who is the Holy Spirit? What are the functions of the Holy Spirit? What are the signs of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives? So we begin by asking the question, who is the Holy Spirit? Contrary to what most people think, the Holy Spirit is not a thing. The Holy Spirit is not something. The Holy Spirit is a person. We understand that there are some phenomenal manifestations of the Holy Spirit like with fire, dove, wind, force. But that does not make the Holy Spirit a thing. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity and the Holy Spirit shares the same essence with God the Father and God the Son. That means the Holy Spirit is also God. That we see in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 5. As God, the Holy Spirit is all powerful, He is omnipotent. The prophet Micah tells us that in Micah chapter 3 verse 8. As God, the Holy Spirit is everywhere, He is omnipresent. We see that in Psalm 139 verse 7. As God, the Holy Spirit is all-knowing, He is omniscient. And that we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10. The Holy Spirit is also eternal as God. We see that in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. As a person, the Holy Spirit can teach. Our Lord Jesus Christ tells us that in John chapter 14 verse 26. As a person, the Holy Spirit can convict. We see that in John chapter 16 verse 8. As a person, the Holy Spirit can advocate, he can counsel. We see that in John chapter 14 verse 16. The Holy Spirit also as a person can help us. St. Paul tells us that in Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Next, we look at the functions of the Holy Spirit. As the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit has been there since God manifested himself to us. He has been there eternally with God the Father and God the Son. The first function of the Holy Spirit is to create. He is the creator spirit. If we go to the book of Genesis chapter 1 from verse 2, we understand that before God began his creative work, the Spirit was hovering over the face of the deep. And in Psalm 104 verse 30, the psalmist says, Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you renew the face of the earth. So the Holy Spirit is there to create. In the work of creation, we see the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit becomes then the breath of God. Like when God created man, making him from the dust of the earth. The Word of God says in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 that God breathed on the man and he became a living being. That is the breath of the Spirit. In Job chapter 33 verse 4, we read that Job saying that I was made by the Spirit of God. The breath of the Almighty brought me to life. So my dear friends, not only human life, life generally comes through the creative force of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is always there at the creation of life 
and also as, at, at the point of recreation and renewal of life. Another important function of the Holy Spirit is His abiding permanent residence amongst us, His permanent presence amongst us. Remember, in the promise our Lord Jesus Christ made to His apostles, if you go to John chapter 14, verse 16, He said, I am asking the Father to send the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, to be with you forever. So that means that the Holy Spirit become a permanent resident among us. And that becomes very important because we can't function without the Holy Spirit. The Christian life is impossible and impracticable without the Holy Spirit. No wonder the apostles have to stay in Jerusalem as the Lord instructed them in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 4. Do not depart Jerusalem until you receive that power from on high. Except you get that power, you cannot function. The third work of the Holy Spirit is to give gifts. God is a giver. The Holy Spirit is a giver. In the manner of God the Father who gave us His Son. And in the manner of the Son who gave His life to us. We see that in Matthew chapter 20 verse 28. The Holy Spirit gives. And He gives His gifts. We remember in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 22, we see the sevenfold gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, fear of God, piety and courage. This is what the Holy Spirit gives us. St. Paul tells us about the gift of the Holy Spirit shown in the functions, in various functions in the church. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 1 to 11, he also tells us about the fruits of the Holy Spirit in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. So the Holy Spirit is there to give us gifts that will help us to function effectively in our Christian life. Now look, we look at the signs of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We remember that when the Holy Spirit came down on the apostles on the day of Pentecost, as we see in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2 from verse 1 to 11, they, we are filled up and there were so, some manifestations like the fire coming down upon them, tongues of fire, they spoke in tongues, there was this wind. Does it mean that these are the only signs that show the presence of the Holy Spirit? No, because the Holy Spirit is coming to stay with us forever. It doesn't mean that when we, the Holy Spirit comes, there must be fire. When the Holy Spirit comes, there must be people speaking in tongues. No, there are enduring indicators of the presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of a Christian. One of them is joy and thankfulness. When we have the Holy Spirit in us, we are filled with joy. We remember St. Paul telling us in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, that joy is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 10, verse 21, rejoice in the Spirit and thank God for revealing certain things to make children and living it out from the rich and the learned. So, the presence of the Holy Spirit leads us to joy. Joy is different from happiness. Joy is not dependent on any external factor. Joy is not dependent on something out there. Joy is within. We can even have joy when we are suffering. And this is the gift of, this is the fruit of the Holy Spirit in us. And we are thankful when we have the Holy Spirit in us. We are thankful to God. We are thankful to, for life. We are thankful for many things. Even when we are besieged by problems, we are still thankful. It is the Spirit that helps us to be thankful to God. Another indication of the presence of the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit helps us to submit and to witness. So there is submission and witnessing as indicators of the presence of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16 verse 13 tells us that the Holy Spirit leads us it means that whoever is led by the Spirit submits to God. And that is why James will tell us to submit to God. So we are submitting to God so that we become witnesses. There is no way we can become witnesses without first of all submitting to God. That was why our Lord Jesus Christ told them to wait for the Holy Spirit. It is only when you, the Spirit comes and you allow the Spirit to lead you, then, then you come out to become witnesses. And that was what happened on the day of Pentecost. When they received the Spirit, they submitted to the power of the Spirit. 
Then St. Peter will come out to preach the word of God to a lot of people and converted about 3,000 people. He was witnessing. So the Spirit helps us to bear witness. It helps us to, to recount, to validate our faith in God by giving testimony that what we have in us is coming from God. The, one of the, another indication of the Holy Spirit in us is prayer. The Spirit helps us to pray. St. Paul already told us that in Romans 8.26, the Spirit helps us in our weakness when we can pray effectively the way we should pray. The Spirit comes to give us utterance that are beyond words. God is Spirit. And prayer is the only way we can connect with God. And prayer is a spiritual activity. Our Lord Jesus Christ told us in John chapter 4, verse 24, that the true worshippers of God are those who worship Him in spirit and in truth. So you now see the power of the Holy Spirit, the indication of the power of the Holy Spirit in us when we pray. It takes the Holy Spirit to pray. It takes the Holy Spirit to talk to God because God is Spirit. My friends, moving forward from here, how do we appreciate the power, the personality, and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst. Each time we celebrate the Pentecost feast, we have a new opportunity for renewal, a new opportunity for turning things around in our lives. So that means the Pentecost experience is not one-time experience. It is not an experience that happened and ended at one point in time. It is an ongoing thing. There should be an ongoing Pentecost in our lives, an ongoing Pentecost experience in our families, in our places of work, in our interactions, and especially in our relationship with God. We should be renewed. There is no time that we need the Holy Spirit more than this time that the world is becoming so helpless and hopeless. We need the, the, the redeeming power of the Holy Spirit. We need the renewal and rejuvenating power of the Holy Spirit to empower us anew to face the challenges of a time. We need a new teacher to lead us to the truth. We need a new guide to guide us from darkness into light. We need the Holy Spirit to enlighten our minds, to give us clarity, to say things the way God wants us to say them. We need the Holy Spirit to embody us to empower us to face the challenges of the time. We need the Holy Spirit to give us new unction so that we can function very effectively wherever we find ourselves. My dear friends, we also on our own part need to have first an intense desire for the Holy Spirit. We have to have what I call the historic hunger for the Holy Spirit. Remember, Esau was hungry that he, he, took, he threw a caution to the wind. We should be very hungry for the Holy Spirit. We have this a desire that we need Him in our lives. We also have to wait for Him with faith because without faith we can't get to that level where we believe that the paraclete, that the Holy Spirit is coming. The apostles were so faithful. They stayed at the upper room waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. We have to be faithful at this point in time waiting for Him to come. We also have to be humble and open for His impartation. We have to humble ourselves there is need for us to be humble and open to receive the Holy Spirit. Finally, we should take ourselves away from sin. Sin creates barrier between us and God. Remember, the walls around us, the walls of sin have to break forth. They have to fall down for the Spirit to come in. We have to renew our lives. We have to come back to God. We have to come for this cleansing. Before God can fill us with the Holy Spirit, we have to empty ourselves. Let us get rid of any form of unrighteousness so that when the Spirit comes, He will find a place to dwell in us. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the promise of the Holy Spirit that is coming to fulfillment this day and also in our lives. Help us with the grace to have this intense desire to open up ourselves to stand in faith and to rid ourselves of sins so that when the Spirit comes, He will find us ready, willing to contain Him in our lives. The Almighty God, in His mercy and Lord, bless and keep you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.